So after winning my pro card, I actually fell into a very deep depression. I was consumed by my binge eating disorder. That was the lowest of the low that I've ever felt. And it just felt like a dark cloud was on top of me the entire time. Like I could not see anything hopeful for myself. Every single day was a struggle. Hi everyone, my name is Tessa Baresi. I'm a Canadian EHP Labs athlete and IFBB Bikini Pro from Victoria, British Columbia. Mental health is something that's very important to me and has been ever since I was basically a young girl. I've always struggled with anxiety, probably from the age of six. And throughout my experiences, I've learned how to how to deal with my anxiety, how to uplift others, and I've kind of built a community within my social media on speaking freely about mental health and kind of erasing the stigma around speaking up about it. And it's important to me because I know when I have a struggle, I don't want to feel alone. And something that's important to me is making others realize that they don't have to be alone either. So I suffered the most with my mental health actually after I won my IFBB Pro card and I wasn't expecting it at all because that was something that I had been chasing for years and years and years. And when I finally won, I expected to feel different. I expected my whole world to change. And it was kind of this crushing realization that it didn't make my life better. It didn't change the problems that I previously had. And now that I won my pro card, that distraction, something that I had been chasing for years and years, was now gone because I had achieved that big goal of mine and I was only left to face the things that I had neglected for years and years. So after winning my pro card, I actually fell into a very deep depression. Um, I was consumed by my binge eating disorder. I basically, that was the lowest of the low that I've ever felt. And it just felt like a dark cloud was on top of me the entire time. Like I could not see anything hopeful for myself. Every single day was a struggle. I initially chose to compete when I was 16 years old because growing up, I did dance for about 13 years. So I've always been a stage baby. I love going on stage, but I also love individual sports because I guess I'm not I like to say I'm a team player, but I really just love relying on myself. I guess that also kind of relates to past traumas because I feel like I cannot rely on others as much as myself. So I love individual sports. I love being on stage. Competing is something that was the best of both worlds. So at the age of 16, which is very young to go into competing and go into that, the fitness industry, I did my first competition and I was hooked. So. Throughout the years, I've done about about nine shows total, and the last show was the one that I finally won my pro card at. This is a little whiteboard that I had, and I wrote, I am the next IFBB Bikini Pro, and I wrote down three things I need to improve on to make that happen, uh, which were vacuums, posing, and my flexibility. And when I went to Montreal to compete in the final show, my mom actually wrote, yes you are, on the whiteboard, and that was the day that I actually won my pro card. You touched on this, but did competing ever affect your mental health? Competing definitely affected my mental health because in itself, you go on stage, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> is this okay? <laughs> okay. Competing definitely affected my mental health because competing itself is putting yourself on stage in front of an audience and in front of a judging panel and you're up there in a bikini getting judged against other people in bikinis. It's very vulnerable. You feel very exposed and it can definitely affect the way you feel about yourself because when you're on stage and you've dieted for so long and you're shredded, this is like the best you've ever looked. And it's not something that's maintainable long-term. So coming out of the competition, gaining the weight back, you tend to develop all of these body issues and body dysmorphia when really you're working hard, you look amazing, people look up to you, but you feel like you're not good enough because you can't maintain your stage look all of the time. Does social media ever play a role in your mental health? 
And have you ever regretted being on social media? Yes, absolutely. Social media definitely plays a role in mental health and I have thought about many times deleting my social media and kind of fantasizing about what life would be like if I didn't have any social media at all. I feel like you constantly have to pretend that you're okay. And being an influencer or somebody with a, a bigger platform on social media, there's a lot of pressure to be positive all the time, be a positive influence, no bad days. Um, this kind of relates to hustle culture where you always have to be working hard, especially as a competitor. And some days if my mental health isn't doing well, it's hard for me to show up and be that person that people look up to because I need somebody, I need that support, and I can't be that support for others. So some things I've done to help cope with my mental health, I did try therapy, and therapy can definitely be hit or miss. Um, I did not know that going into therapy. I just figured once I sign up for therapy, everything will be fine, I'll be fixed. But when it comes to therapy, you really have to click with your therapist, and I've actually had a few very bad instances with therapy where it actually made my mental health worse. But not long ago, I actually found a therapist who really resonated with me and was able to help me find solutions that made me feel good about what I was doing rather than find generic solutions that didn't really apply to me and my situation. Another thing I like to do for mental health is I honestly just love reading and journaling. I love listening to music. Training is something I've always done for my mental health and that's kind of like how I got into the fitness industry. But at the end of the day, competing or not, training is always gonna be an outlet for me. It always made me realize how much stronger I actually am and it kind of kind of made me realize that your mind is always want to, is always going to want to give up before your body. And powerlifting and lifting heavy weights, that's something that made me realize how strong I actually am. So any advice I could give to somebody would be find that thing that makes you feel strong, whether it's dancing or drawing, lifting weights. Everybody is going to be different. There's not a one size fits all for mental health. That's why I'm not a fan of like giving people generic advice like journaling and, and walking and meditating because sometimes that won't work for everybody. So find that thing that is applicable to you that makes you feel good and hang on to that. The EHP Labs community has really helped me with my struggles in mental health by honestly just having a community there where we uplift each other and we can share our struggles. For example, another Canadian athlete, Tanner, he goes by Barbarian Body. Him and I have actually grown very close and we talk quite often about our struggles with mental health and we've got very similar viewpoints, but the way that we communicate with each other, it's never complaining or just venting, it's uplifting each other, it's making each other feel better and finding solutions. And I've really found that within the EHP Labs community is we all have a very similar vision and we just want each other to be uplifted and move forward and be our best selves. Something I would say to my younger self is don't beat yourself up for not being where you want to be yet because those years haven't happened yet. You haven't been able to put in that work. There's so many more things you need to experience before you get to where you want to be. So enjoy where you're at right now and don't beat yourself up for not being years ahead because those years are yet to come and they're gonna be so enjoyable only if you let yourself enjoy them.